Hi guys and welcome to another vlog. I am here at the Mercedes Benz Museum. That's a horse because you know horsepower. In fact, the lift also makes the sound of a horse. Anyways, this is the Mercedes Museum in Stuttgart, and I'm going to be quickly showing you around this kick-ass place. So this is where the whole journey of automobiles started. On the left, what we've got is actually a replica. This one is not a replica. So let's quickly talk about both these things, rather both these cars. Can't really call it a car as such because this is actually a three-wheeler. Okay, the top speed was 16 kilometers per hour and uh, it had a displacement of around a liter. This is the Benz patent motor car. Yeah, the patent is actually there. I'll show that to you as well. So, this was the very first time an automobile came into existence back in 1886. Yeah, you can see that. That is the patent and uh, yeah, it has got three wheels, not four. But on the left, we've got a vehicle which has got four wheels, which is sort of a car. That was actually made by Daimler and displacement was 462 cc, power was around 1.1 PS and the top speed was 18 kilometers per hour. So Daimler, Benz, both of them were not together. But the engine on this was so well done that Mr. Daimler decided that he's going to put this engine everywhere. Yeah, everywhere. That's the reason why the Mercedes logo has this tri, the star, because one is for land, one is for air and one is obviously for water and that's the reason that engine went into you know a boat as well as an aircraft sort of a thing meanwhile there seems to be a motorcycle here now a lot of history in this museum you really will have to read extensively to understand about all this and more so we're going to quickly browse through this i'm just giving you a quick glimpse of whatever happened but i'm just going to tell you the historical significance of things here so you see the size of wheels is very different but this one had 1.5 PS of power and the top speed actually increased to 18 kilometers per hour. And uh, this was known as a quadricycle back then. 565 cc was the displacement here. I don't know exactly what this is, but it seems like a wagon to me. 2 PS of power, top speed increases to 20 kilometers per hour. Now, as you keep going ahead, the speed keeps increasing again and again and again. Now, the funny thing here is that uh, this one, I think, actually got a water pump or something of that sort. It had seven horsepower and around two cylinders. Displacement was three liters, okay? And it really needed a lot of water to cool the engine down. In fact, the consumption of water sort of was higher than petrol. And the first car which I showed you there, that one, yeah, the Daimler one, that did not have, well, I mean, you did not have any fuel pump, so you had to actually go to a pharmacy and get petrol. <laughs> That's funny, right? So uh, this is a Daimler motor locomotive. I believe this is sort of a train locomotive. It has a V2 engine and it was made in 1892. 16 kilometers per hour was the top speed. Now, as time progressed, things became better. In 1893, this had three horsepower with 18 kilometers per hour top speed. And uh, you see, the driver, and the passengers, they have to face each other. Now that's fine. However, what if it rains? Person is going to open an umbrella. How will you be able to see ahead? There were no front parking sensors. There were no rear parking sensors. And most of these cars came with heated seats because the engine was right below and used to heat a lot as well in those times. Okay, because there was no sort of liquid cooling. Now, with time, things became better because then obviously with experience, they also realized that, you know, how do you make it better? So. What they did was they decided that we're going to seat people not in front we're going to seat them behind so that we can actually see so in this particular car this is the benz omnibus and nothing to do with the omni 20 kilometers per hour top speed and 5 ps of power here the driver is sitting here the passengers are sitting here finally there's good visibility on offer anyways this is uh, from 1896 18 kilometers per hour seems to be the norm but you know the power is increasing 4.6 ps of power and one liter of displacement but again here you know People are facing each other, but I think there was sort of a revolution in some of these cars. You see how this thing has been done, the fender and all, and uh, the engine placement. It's weatherproof for the driver, not for the co-passenger. That's kind of funny. And uh, yeah, this is a wagon, 12 kilometers per hour top speed. It's heavy. It's a truck. You can call it a truck. In fact, it's got two steering wheels. One is the main one. The other is, yeah, you guessed it right, for the brakes of the vehicle. So with time experience and of course uh, you know expertise things start becoming better at daimler he started making better cars or rather faster cars is the word i need to use okay if you notice steering wheel actually came in that car then steering wheel became a sort of a standard 
but somehow it's missing on this one. Again, this has a top speed of 35 kilometers per hour. That's pretty fast indeed. So moving ahead, this was actually the beginning of the whole automobile era with Daimler leading at the front along with Benz and they were two completely different companies. Okay, uh, One, uh, the Daimler is obviously from Stuttgart and Benz was from somewhere else in Germany itself. And uh, here in the museum, you can see a lot of historical things. And uh, these cars were actually displayed at some exhibitions and all. So someone, okay, I don't remember his name. He actually got interested in these cars and he's like, I would like to buy a lot of those. Okay, till now there is no Mercedes Benz, there is no Mercedes only, but there is Daimler and there is Benz and there was Mr. Maybach as well, who was also there at the forefront of designing cars. So this guy comes along and he says, you know what, I want to buy your cars, but I want them to become better, I want them to become faster, I want them to become safer. He wanted all these things and he also had another requirement, he said, I'm going to be investing in the company, but only on one condition, I want you to change the name of the company. The name of the company should be Mercedes which was the name of his daughter. That's how it became Mercedes-Benz. Now, Benz came in later. Initially, it was Daimler and then Mercedes. Now, you know, the cost of these cars are extremely expensive and they were obviously driven by, or not driven by, people who use these cars were kings and queens and whatnot. This is actually a limousine. This is the old era equivalent of a Mercedes Maybach today. And just see the amount of comfort and space on offer. But the car which resulted in Mercedes, the first Mercedes was this one, okay. It has a proper radiator at the front, okay. Finally, it stopped consuming 130 liters per 100 kilometers of water and became more efficient. So this one has a top speed of 80 kilometers per hour, which is evolutionary, 40 pace of power and 6.8 liters of displacement. This was obviously designed by Mr. Maybach and uh, you see, the wheel size is also the same, both at the front as well as the back. Now, this was a complete revolution of sorts. It was so revolutionary, this particular car, that Benz all of a sudden did not know what to do because they became clueless. This changed the complete game. So, Benz decided to copy Daimler and he came up with this particular car, which you see right in front. Now, around this time, Ford also decided, rather, Henry Ford came up with the Model T and he only mass produced them with the assembly line. All these were handmade, so they were extremely expensive. 18 PS of power, 60 kilometers per hour top speed. This is the Mercedes 75 PS. Uh, the name is actually a little funny, Doppel Phaeton. Okay, 95 kilometers per hour is the top speed. So as time progressed, cars became better and better and better. But still, there was no story of Mercedes Maybach. Rather, sorry, there was no story of Mercedes-Benz at that time. It was only Daimler Mercedes and then Benz was a separate company altogether. Here you see, this is actually the chassis. So body on frame during those times. I will come to when Monoco actually started happening. So this is the first modern automobile which you saw there, right there. Moving on, this is when actually Mercedes came for the very first time because it was the name of the daughter of the investor or the person who really tried to steer the company in a new direction altogether because they were making cars but they were not that safe, they were not that fast and they were not that efficient either. Meanwhile, here you can see that is the Mercedes-Benz Stadium and a lot of football fields. Stuttgart is an absolute crazy place because not only is it the home of Mercedes-Benz, it's also the home of Porsche. Now, everything was going fine, then World War One happened. Now, World War One really had a lot of destruction happening right there which meant that both Mercedes, rather Daimler Mercedes and Benz had to venture into other things. They are making aircraft engines, yeah, they were making aircraft engines, they were making bicycles, they were making typewriters, swing machines, furniture, what not they were making to survive and that continued for some time but then they realized that making all this did not really help them at all because things did not move forward for them in, its, in the sense of sales. So they had to join hands and that's when Mercedes-Benz finally happened. Mercedes, or Daimler Mercedes and Benz came together to jointly develop cars because of the World War, the First World War. And the result is what you can see right in front of us. This is the result of Mercedes-Benz coming together. The cars were obviously so much more better and faster as well. Speed is the name of the game, honestly. So this is the 1923 it has 40 horsepower, okay, and has a top speed of 110 kilometers per hour. Now, the Mercedes logo was the three-pointed star, and the circle was from Benz, and they came together, and that's how the Mercedes-Benz logo came. 
and uh, you know what these cars are super expensive because they were hand built and because of being hand built not only were they expensive the other problem was that you know they took a lot of time to make as well not many people could afford them either which ways see the interior see the kind of luxury on offer absolutely staggering now obviously this is a museum so everything is extremely well maintained the funny thing here is that this car had an option of air conditioning okay the cost of air conditioning was more than the cost of a Volkswagen Beetle at that time yes the cost of air conditioning in this car was more than the cost of a Volkswagen Beetle at that time just imagine what is the kind of cost now we know Maybach was massively responsible for the motor car along with Mr. Benz and of course Daimler as well but amongst all this the person really who supported the whole movement was Bosch Bosch is also from Germany and uh, they helped with a lot of parts a lot of components a lot of research a lot of development and here you see I mean the cars are in pristine condition I don't really understand the logic of having two horns at the front you're not driving in India but you've got two spare wheels on either side as well so here you see white wall tires looks so classic absolutely amazing the design of these cars this is the Mercedes-Benz 500k special roadster 160 kilometers per hour was the top speed of this car and employed a 5 liter engine this is the SSK 192 kilometers per hour was the top speed and uh, it used to produce around 225 PS of power but the thing is the cars used to consume a lot of fuel okay it was more like 1 to 2 kilometers per liter as the fuel economy at that time anyways moving forward as you see revolutions in engine technology here you see it and you know what yeah I was actually just reading what's written here it's written something about how ladies used to wear a hat and you know to prevent all this flying off okay the they had a new type of hat that's about it so we're going to move down this section because things get more interesting here now on the left side I believe uh, we have some really historical cars standing although we've got scale models of a lot of these machines as well okay diesel was invented by Mr. Diesel that is having shell branding over there okay this seems to be more of a fire truck or something of that sort yeah it's a tank actually it's a fuel tank oil tank actually and uh, it was having a top speed of 87 kilometers per hour weighed 10,000 kgs and had a 5.6 liter engine with six cylinders and uh, we've got a collection of classic Mercedes cars right on that truck okay I've seen a lot of this right now in Germany because this is how cars are transported and they're not covered at all we've got a lot of specs also 985 Mercedes-Benz 280CE so this is relatively newer okay because we are dived right deep into history right now which means that we need to focus back on the beginnings of Mercedes-Benz however check this out okay this is so cool this is a school bus which I would love to go okay and uh, this one is a mercedes-benz 01000 mobile postman i don't know yeah i think it's a post van and uh, it's absolutely crazy the length of this car this is long wheelbase into an entirely different level you can actually work around everything inside here this is kind of a six by six or what seems so meanwhile this might remind you of force motors yeah because their tempo travelers look very 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 similar and we've got proper tires also around this era okay this Mercedes-Benz whatever tow truck is it can actually accommodate a 300 SLR yeah so that you can go to your track days without any issue whatsoever look at the interior of the car one seater with no it's a two seater but how does the second person sit I have absolutely no clue whatsoever I love the wheels on the car the interior of this van I, I love the the way the horn actually can be pressed on these vehicles anyways let's move forward because there is something which we need to see on the left side which means that can you see the amount of traffic accumulating that's absolutely crazy and uh, here we go down I think we're going to get into probably the G-Wagon section and that section keeps changing every six months why does it change every six months because right now they're celebrating I think 40 years of G-Wagon then they'll have an AMG section there then probably they'll change that they'll have an S-Class section or an E-Class section so cars 
started to change dramatically after the World War, rather the Second World War, because now all the resources of Benz and Mercedes, Daimler, they came together. So here you can see it, Daimler, Benz, AG, lot of cool stuff happening there. The Formula One medical car, the C32 AMG, and uh, this thing, okay, it happens to be Mercedes Benz 320 Kranken wagon. This is actually an ambulance. Meanwhile, this blue color thing, it is actually the L409. It has 90 PS of power and a top speed of 104 kilometers per hour. This can literally go anywhere. Now we talk about Tata's 407 truck. Now you know where the inspiration comes from. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's the Unimog. And uh, this is a Unimog U500. It had 279 PS of power, but a top speed of only 85 kilometers per hour because it obviously had a different application altogether. Look at that exhaust. Look at how, you know, the wheels have the chains on it. And this Unimog is absolute madness of a machine. Unfortunately, I mean, I've never ever seen it on the road, like ever, never, never, never really seen it on the road, unfortunately. That's kind of a bummer police car and whatnot. Anyways, getting into the next section right here. Where is it from? Yes, it is from here actually. We're gonna go down, further down now. And before that, I have to also show you this absolute cool stuff which are happening in Mercedes-Benz cars. Okay, what came along was the SL. What does SL mean? SL actually stands for super light. Okay, I don't know what kind of models these are, but they seem to be based on some wooden treatment. Anyways, these are the sports cars from the 50s. This is the SL. SL stands for super light. And uh, this is actually the frame of the car. Now, they wanted something which was light, which was durable, cost effective, and they only got something of this side. Now, this is known as a space frame. Because of the design of the frame is such, they could not put doors on it. And that's from where the gullwing doors actually come. Yeah, the gullwing doors were not aesthetics. They were more because they had no option but to do those upwards. The interior looks super duper awesome as well. And then they obviously, because of the success of the car in racing, they decided to put it into production as well. Can you see the metallic paint on the car? Yeah, metallic paint also came along around this time itself. And it's so shiny, so bright. This is the 300S Cabriolet. It had a top speed of 175 kilometers per hour in 1951, which was a lot with a three liter engine and 150 PS of power. Weight wasn't much, it used to be around 560 kgs, correct me if I'm wrong, I think that seems super duper light as well. Meanwhile, this particular car here is the Mercedes-Benz 300. I love the paint scheme on the car, it seems so bright, probably it is that uh, effect of a studio light or something of that sort. The Mercedes-Benz LK338 Kipper, this one had a displacement of one, oh, sorry, 11 litres and used to produce around uh, 180 PS of power. Okay, it weighed 7,500 kgs, not really caring about the top speed, but I believe it should do around 79 kilometers per hour. Even a Mercedes-Benz truck looks so freaking elegant, which is staggering, honestly, it's absolutely staggering. Look at that. So, another cool bit about these cars was the fact that, you know, these two cars still continue with body on frame. This car was super cost effective and it was a monocoque. So everything was happening body and frame, but this started with the monocoque chassis and that's why it became faster. So not faster, more about efficiency, 126 kilometers per hour was the top speed and a displacement of 1.8 liters producing, producing 52 PS of power. So, you know, that's where actually the change happened. Okay, there's something important written here. Uh, Do you understand? Basically something to do with the smell of the car, how they actually found the smell inside the vehicle. Anyways, those gullwing doors look absolutely rad. Just look at it, the 300 SL is such a charm. So now what you're going to do is, uh, I think you covered most of the history of Mercedes-Benz and how the whole thing started, the first automobile started and from the first automobile, they got into, uh, you know, various other factors like land, air, and uh, obviously C, but not much worked out. See these cool scale models. Actually, all of this was produced. So Mercedes-Benz over its 100 year plus history has made so many cars. Now we're going to get to the most interesting section, which I'm sure most of you would love to see. And that happens to be, I think, after this section, we're going to get there, which is the G-Wagon section. 
here again a lot of historical stuff because of celebrities where the celebrities were involved right from kings queens and some actors and actresses also so right up front that is the pullman look at the length of the car and on the right this is actually an armored car this is bulletproof even the glass is bulletproof of this vehicle and it can withstand bullets it can withstand everything it was from the 1935 and was used by kings and queens of various countries displacement 7.7 .7 liters power 150 ps and a top speed of 150 km per hour yeah absolutely staggering this is of course the pullman the s600 pullman not the s600 but the 600 pullman and uh, it had a top speed of 120 km per hour you see the amount of space on the inside absolutely crazy okay and you know what the amount of space inside this car could rival that of uh, probably a train okay because railway was actually the benchmark of traveling in comfort now the funny thing here is that it also came with the option of a telephone the cost of the telephone was more than the cost of a ford mustang in germany at that time which made it bloody expensive but then people who had that kind of money wouldn't really care about it either so these are from 1932 and you see the classic design continuing with round headlights this is sort of a bus here and this is the mercedes benz 190 sl which had 105 ps of power and a top speed of 170 km per hour because obviously it used to weigh uh, very less mercedes benz managed to sell around 25000 units of this car now i don't know what's happening in this bus but it kind of looks cool nonetheless there's some music playing which is going to affect uh, you know monetization on this video just kidding this one uh, the ml was used in jurassic park yeah and uh, it went to hollywood and it came back in the same condition after the whole shoot happened that super cool some footballer used this mercedes slk 55 amg now all the cars you've seen today are left hand drive right all of the cars are left hand drive this is the 500 sl however the first right hand drive probably you're seeing in the museum is this one which was actually made for princess diana and was gifted to her i think by mercedes benz however she had to return it back after 9 months because mercedes benz although they gifted her this particular car the 500 sl they could not do that because the royal family has some rules that you only can be driving a british car so rolls royce uh, had a lot of you know issues and they created a lot of issues regarding the same so they had to i mean she had to return the car and her reason for returning it was that there is not much space inside for children she couldn't say that you know what i cannot drive it because i'm from the royal family and i need to drive a british car only the 190 e23 anyways a few of them in india as well so you got this section with a lot of mercedes logos and cutlery i don't know why we have got spoons and knives and forks and what not but you guys definitely need to visit this place for once so these are not toy cars and you can't drive them but it's sort of a scale model larger scale model this section is extremely important because mercedes benz says that no matter what car you drive our hand is there in it they invented the airbag with the s class they invented abs along with bosch as well and seat belts too so this is an airbag and uh, yeah i don't know if i'm allowed to do that but anyways seat belt so they invented it and you can see this whole section of cars i think the w126 the w140 the w116 all these cars here wherein there was a seat belt there was an airbag there was abs and all of that and more this is super cool now isn't this just look at it i don't know exactly what that rope is trying to depict but if you guys know that please let me know this is the mercedes benz 220s with a top speed of 165 km per hour 2.1 liter displacement i love how compact this car is this car if it launched today also in the same design it's going to sell it looks that good beyond a doubt so you know a lot of these mercedes cars are actually used like in germany a lot of mercedes cars are used as taxis in fact uh, when i went to switzerland i saw a lot of the mercedes cars specifically speaking i think it was the which car was it india mein milti kaun si gaadi hai wo jis pe marco polo hai ha v class v class so many v class cars are there which are being used by cabbies in switzerland just imagine the cost of cabs here anyways from here you can see yeah there you see the mercedes logo on top and uh, this factory is such that on one side of this factory you can see the all the cars here like all the cars are parked here so the ground floor has obviously the regular mercedes cars on the first floor i think another section of mercedes cars on the second floor you've got all the amgs along with my bag 
I think I only spotted one Maybach there, which happened to be the S560, which looked absolutely amazing. Now, this is the section which I was talking about to you earlier. This is the G-Wagon section. And uh, the G-Wagon section has this G500 to celebrate 3 lakh sales of the G-Wagon. This, the Pope Mobile, the one which was gifted to the Pope, which, by the way, had a chair from a dental chair. Yeah, the chair is actually from a dental chair because they could not figure out how to make any other chair or, you know, to make it work. There it is. That is the G65 V12 engine. This is the final edition after this first generation of the G-Wagon had the 12-cylinder engine went away and never came back. Right now, we only get the new G-Wagon with a 8-cylinder engine, the V8, the G63. This is the 300 GD from 1982. And uh, this is actually a replica. It's not an original, this is a replica which was used in the in a rally, Dakar rally to be precise. The interior did not look that flamboyant somehow and uh, so did the seats. But you know, this was when the G-Wagon story started. They did not think that the G-Wagon would become so popular. Today the G-Wagon is so popular that it sells a lot in Japan, in Dubai, in the US and whatnot. It was also used as uh, you know, a vehicle for service in, as an ambulance, as police force and whatnot. So this car, this particular car, the 250GD, let me show you the interior and you realize the G-Wagon has really progressed and how. This one was actually used for the very first ad shoot of the car. Okay, whatever you see on the brochure, well, this is the car which was used for it. From 1979, the 240GD, meanwhile, all of a sudden I see a 1907 Daimler motor, some wagon or something, here, scale model. Okay, that's a G500 Cabriolet Final Edition 200 from 2013. Honestly, I don't understand the point of a Cabriolet version of a G-Wagon, but still we'll have a sneak peek into the interior of this car. There you see it. Yeah, if you see the G650 Maybach, where, you know, from where it's influenced. Anyways, coming ahead. Now the interesting part here is that uh, the G-Wagon is obviously a very capable car and this wall completely depicts what it has been able to do. How capable is the G-Wagon? Well, this table here, rather, this sort of a thing tells you. So, only the G-Wagon can climb this. Meanwhile, I'm going to try to do that right now. And it's extremely difficult. That's the gradient which it can tackle, both going up as well as coming down. That's staggering. This particular car, 26 years the person took to go all over the world. He drove this very car all over the world. In 26 years, the car did not break down even once. Well, that is the reliability of the Mercedes G-Wagon. Yeah, just look at it. Meanwhile, they want to depict that it can go off-road in the day and in the night it can go to a club. That's why. How cool is this? I mean, I don't know if you guys can make it out to be properly done. But one side, it's completely dirty like it's gone off-road. And the, or the other side, it's absolutely clean like it's come fresh out of a spa. And they have done it on both the sides. Front, back, rear, side, everywhere. Looks super cool now. Meanwhile, let's get ahead. That is where it's depicting where all the G-Wagon went, this particular G-Wagon, when Mr. Otto took it on a trip across the globe. 26 years it took him to travel 215 countries. Well, that's crazy. So on the right side, if we've got all this depiction happening here, the whole history of the G-Wagon. Yeah, crazy color. I've driven that particular car in India. Absolutely cool. The G500 square, that's also cool. G6 by 6. Unfortunately, none in the museum right now. A few scale models here, but they are not there in the museum, unfortunately. One is standing outside the museum. It's kind of not accessible because all the glasses in this building are having these black dots to prevent heat. Now, this is the electric section, and uh, this is a fuel cell. Zero emission, zero CO2, so they've been working on electric as well. This is the SLS electric drive. That's kind of cool. That thing looks like rocket science to me. I don't know why it's designed like that, but uh, it seems to be from the 2000s. I don't know exactly what the significance of this particular car, but uh, you know, it obviously uses diesel, has a top speed of 150 kilometers per hour, and the main aim of this car was to cut fuel consumption dramatically. So they came up with this concept, and uh, some of the cars here are super fuel efficient. Some of them guzzle a lot of fuel. In fact, there's a car which used to guzzle like more than a liter of fuel per, uh, yeah, more than a liter of fuel per kilometer. That's how inefficient it was. Now, some of the cars could not go into production due to economic downturn and war and whatnot. None of them here, but this, you know, concept, the electric concept, or rather the hybrid concept was made. Firstly, this is the electric drive I was talking about, the SLS. 
super cool. I remember seeing photos of it when it was actually unveiled. Looked out of the world. The Gullwing dose is just something else. Now, this is the concept IAA. 250 km per hour is the top speed and it has a very low coefficient of drag of just 0.19. Now, this is a plug-in hybrid and uh, powered by a petrol engine, of course. The shape of the vehicle is such that it's extremely efficient in cheating wind. Moving on, we'll go downwards again. So, as you can see, there's a lot of history, but something which you guys probably want to see or have been missing out on is, of course, the motorsport section. And Mercedes-Benz, rather Mercedes-AMG to came later because AMG was actually a tuning division started by someone who used to tune Mercedes cars to make them faster and he used to do all kinds of tuning. But that was taken over by Mercedes, I think, around 15 years back. Here, you see all the motorsport, the motorsport section, all the Mercedes cars, you can actually experience them in that section. Okay, the cars keep changing and how. Now, I don't know how much of a motorsport fan you are, but since we are running late in this video, I'm going to be running right now to show you quickly because the distance here is crazy. Okay, that is a Mercedes Formula 1 engine and from 2002, I think it's a V10 engine. Here is where the history gets maddening for motorsport enthusiasts because Silver Arrows, must have heard of it. But the cool bit here is, there is the McLaren Mercedes car. There's the Lewis Hamilton car, which he won. This is, I think, uh, Mika Hakkinen. And there is the Nico Rosberg car as well. So, Formula One, if you guys follow, is absolute stunning sport. Absolute fun as well. The engine from this particular car, sort of, has been taken out and put into the Mercedes Project One. Okay, this is the racing apparel. So it's been put in the Project 1, which has around 1000 horsepower and can go from 0 to 200 km per hour in 6 seconds perhaps. That's stupendously quick, super fast. Here, you see, it's so light, it's made of carbon fiber, that you can actually lift that thing on the top with one hand. So, a lot of history here. In fact, can you see that car? The one behind? Yeah, it has uh, this thing on the windscreen, what do you call them, bars. Why? Because while having the race, I think the race was over three or five days, the person, there's some vulture, something hit the windscreen, injured the person, but they continued by repairing it and they actually won. So, the fuel consumption on this car, absolutely staggering. But forget all this. Can you see the chassis? What does it remind you? Yeah, the SL. That is how the whole idea came of doing gullwing doors. Gullwing doors was not a style statement. Now, Mercedes's racing color was mostly silver. But why did they come up with white? New regulations came. You had to be under 750 kgs. So just imagine you have to be under 750 kgs for this particular car. How do you reach that? It's so difficult to do that, right? But there's a catch. They got to 751 kgs and they didn't know how to reduce weight further. So they stripped off all the paint. They came to the white color and the white color is like, there's no paint on it. That's how Mercedes-Benz's white racing color came along. And they were able to meet the criteria of under 750 kgs. So that's done here. We're just going to exit from here and uh, try and go to the outside. So a few things to be seen here as well. Now when you get out, this car was actually made by Ferdinand Porsche. In fact, he worked at Mercedes for five years and uh, he did contribute a lot. That particular car, second one with the Mercedes logo, has a record for the highest speed on the Autobahn, 432 kilometers per hour. I think that had a displacement of 40 liters. Yeah, 40 liters is like 4,000 cc. In fact, one of the cars also had a speed, uh, had a displacement of around, not 40 liters, uh, 21 liters as well. This is 40 liters, top speed of 432 kilometers per hour on the autobahn, the highest speed ever driven on a public road. And you're seeing more concepts and whatnot. But you know, what is the most interesting bit right now for me? Couple of more cars I want to show you before ending this video. First one on the right. Okay, this unfortunately never made it to production because of its fuel consumption was too much. And by the time, you know, they got ready with it, they could not launch it because of the massive fuel consumption of the car. This is known as the C11. Shown at the 1969 Frankfurt Motor Show. Frankfurt Motor Show does not happen, now the Berlin will happen. 2.4 liters, 350 PS of power and red lines all the way to 7,000 RPM. Okay, so it was like a research. It was an experiment on wheels. And then we have this beauty right ahead of us. Okay, this is the F400. Now the interesting bit about this car is that it could, you know, tilt up to 20 degrees by in cornering. 218 PS of power with a 3.2 liter V6 motor. See the interior. Obviously this is a concept car, never went into production. And uh, 
you know, we talk about magic body control. This particular Mercedes car was the first one to get magic body control with two sensors. You can see them on the windscreen. Yeah, it's the F700 and uh, you know, it used to adjust a lot of things. 1.8 liters, 236 PS of power. It used to adjust a lot of parameters in the suspension to get going. And uh, that particular blue car from Mercedes, that has a joystick. There's no steering wheel, there's a joystick in there. The purple car there has seating similar to what we've seen in the McLaren F1. So you sit in the center and then drive. Yeah, so like a, very much like a McLaren. Center seating, so you can drive it in India, you can drive it in Germany. No worries about left hand and right hand drive versions either. Now you can go down and you can see how Mercedes Benz cars are designed and developed and whatever, all that sort. But save the best for the last, which is this, the Mercedes Maybach S, sorry, it is the G650. Very difficult to pronounce the name because something like Lord, I'll go ahead and check that spelling out. But look at the interior of the car. It's like aircraft levels of comfort, not normal aircraft, but private aircraft levels of comfort. This is the Maybach of the G-Wagon. Only 99 units were made. It has a V12 engine on offer. And the wheels are obviously massive here. By turbo V12. All this madness Mercedes did with the first generation of the Maybach G650. It's known as the Landolet. Okay, I'm very difficult at pronouncing it. 630 PS of power, but an absolute fuel guzzler of sorts. But it's a Maybach at the end of the day. And since it's a Maybach, you can expect all the luxuries, all the comfort. Check the interior out. That's absolutely luxurious and stunning. So guys, this was a quick tour of the Mercedes-Benz. Not really a quick tour because we reached 36 minutes and I promise Gagan that I'll be here in 20 minutes, but he himself is not there. So obviously such great cars to look at, you'll get lost. If you like this video, you know what you have to do. Give it the thumbs up, that's the like button. And also subscribe to the channel. I will see you guys in the next video real soon. Bye-bye, see you, take care.